Everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Uh, we have a great show here for you today. I'm going to screw up his last name, so we're going to edit this. <laughs> um, uh, we got Mike Paolini. Nailed it. I nailed it. Oh my God. I can't, I can't believe it. I did that. Anyways, uh, I was practicing in the bathroom earlier. That's why I got it. Um, anyways, guys, I hope you guys like the economics video on Monday. Let me know if you guys want more of that. Um, we're at over 800 subscribers now. Uh, we're on our way to a thousand. Mike's going to help us get there. Uh, and today we're going to talk uh, vacation rentals and uh, a cool thing you just did. I, I did do a cool thing. You did do a cool thing. Yes. We're going to post. We'll post a couple of his pictures cool. and we'll we'll um we'll link your your Instagram so Please. people can go on and see it. And if they want to rent it, you'll find out what we're doing. So um, so Mike, you're a brand new real estate agent. It has nothing to do with why you're here, though. You own a property in Muskoka, right? I do. Which yeah. is, for people who don't know, it's cottage country. It's like, like a, he owns a property on the water. Um, yeah, and it's your personal. It's my personal property. It's it's six and a bit acres. It's in Huntsville. Okay. It's right on the lake, small little lake. It's got about nine hundred feet of waterfront, and I've had it for about six years. I bought it when I was twenty-two. It was my it was my first property. It's it's my baby. Right, and you don't rent out the main cottage, or do you? No, I don't rent out the the main cottage. There's a couple of reasons for that, but um, that's kind of mine and. The plan was always to buy large enough land so that I can add additional cabins and cool, unique accommodations to rent those out instead. Right. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Yes, sir. Because you just put up a, a what? A Quincy? <laughs> a Quincy. Oh. A yurt. A yurt, right. Well, that's, that's like a Quincy. So a yurt is, it's a traditional Mongolian hut. Yes. And what it basically is, it's, it's a glorified tent. Mm -hmm. It's... Some, when you some, some um, permanent structure, isn't that what they call it? Or? Exactly. Yeah. So when you think of glamping, that's probably one of the first things that comes to mind is a yurt. Um, they come in different sizes. Often there's a dome at the top so you can look straight up through the sky. Um, they can be permanent. You can leave them up all winter if you'd like, or you can relatively easily take them up and down. Okay. So... All right, so you have six acres, and you've just put a, a yurt on there, one yurt, right? Number one, yeah. Number one yurt, and, and how many are you gonna get, do you think, total? It's a good question. I'd like to get at least one or two more yurts, but after that, there's a lot of options, right? I'm looking for these cool experiences. I don't just wanna put up cabins. I wanna put up yurts, maybe two or three. I wanna put up tree houses. There's something called geodesic domes that I think mm -hmm. are really cool that I'd love to play around with. So at this point, total, I'm looking at four or five accommodations. What mix that is between yurts and tree houses and all that, I'm not too sure, but the ultimate goal is about five. Okay. Well, let's, let's break down the numbers on this one yurt. Yeah. So what did it cost you to purchase the yurt? So the yurt, if we're talking all in stands on a deck the yurt itself and all the furnishings we're talking about probably close to twenty two thousand. Twenty two thousand. so okay let's let's break that down how much did the yurt cost yurt was about um 18. 18. so then the deck was what two deck was two and furnishings, furnishings and all that random stuff is two Right, and so we'll post a couple pictures of the interior yeah. of the yurt, and like you can go on his Instagram and check all this stuff out, right? Because he has the pictures posted there, and so we're in. You just put it up this past weekend, right? I did, yeah. So we're August the twelfth. This will be out. Um, yeah, and then so you put it. Where did you put it up to advertise it? So we honestly we barely advertise it. This has been in the works for a while, right? So over the last few months, we've been reaching out to friends and whatnot who thought who we thought might want to rent it, um, posting on Instagram, Facebook, direct messaging. But in terms of advertising, not too much. So you don't even have it on Airbnb or VRBO or anything like so that? So just went on Airbnb about 24 hours ago. Okay. So we've been live for 24 hours and that's our main booking site. That's how we're gonna get all of our guests basically we were thinking of just doing it um like 
personally, messaging people and booking that way, e-transfers, but we really like the Airbnb platform, the fact that you can get reviews and yeah. you can, you know, advertise to thousands of people versus individually messaging people you think might, might want to rent. All right. So you're four days into having this year. Uh, you're August 12th. You have it booked from when till when? But like within 24 hours, Mark, we had the rest of August booked. We have September booked. And our every, every day in September? Or? Yeah, so I'm sure by the time this video comes out, it'll be every day in September. Um, and that happened in the span of about a day. Right. Um, so yeah, it's crazy. And you're getting how much for a weekday and how much for a weekend? Yeah, so the pricing structure we're going with. So the yurt sleeps three. Mm -hmm. That's important to know. Yes. Um, so the yurt sleeps three. Weekdays were going 150 a night. Weekends were going 175. And long weekends, which there is two left for the season, 200 a night. And so you're going to do Thanksgiving. So is there heating in there? So the plan is to hopefully put on a little mini wet stove. <laughs> hopefully, because if you're up there Thanksgiving, that could be mighty cold. Well, like we'll have to. If we yeah. want to rent it out past probably the and first week of October and of September, we'll have to get a wood stove in there. Yeah. It does have two layers, so there is an insulation layer, but at the end of the day, we want the guests to be comfortable. We want the best experience possible for them. Yeah. And I think uh, a wood stove would would do the do the trick. So do you think you're gonna rent this out all winter? No, not all winter, and that's solely based on the fact that the road into this property is not maintained in the winter. Okay. So the long-term vision, call it three years, is that we do rent it out during the winter when we have the wood stove in it, but um, we actually even add to the experience and probably charge more by including a like oh, really? snowmobile or, or snowmobile experience. Yeah. So we pick them up at the like the landing spot where cars can actually park in the winter. Mm -hmm. We pick them up on snowmobiles, we do the tours with them, we drop them off at the year. It's all already warmed up for them with the stove. So long term plan, yes, because if you can extend a rental season by five, six months sometimes, like wow. tens of thousands of dollars. I mean so and guys like if I, I know people who rent cottages and that type of thing and they always buy four season cottages for that reason because mm -hmm. they get an extra couple they basically it pays most a lot of their expenses through the winter mm -hmm. like they're covering off their mortgages and their expenses and that type of thing by renting it out for 250 to 300 400 dollars a night in the winter time um and that's what I've been experienced. But when Mike told me about this, I thought this was great. I mean, this is really thinking outside the box. Yeah. So let's, so from today till end of September, what's the revenue? Yeah, good question. So I am assuming, well, I assumed a 70% booking rate because that's the standard um, that a lot of people use. Well, you're going to get more in the summer and less in the no kidding, and we're we're booked out already. So if we use a ninety percent booking rate, we're talking about forty two hundred a month. So for two months until the end of September, that's about eighty four, eighty five hundred dollars. So in the and, and you have no additional costs except you got to put the wood stove in, mm -hmm. but that costs you nothing to run. Yeah. So the startup costs are the main ones, right? Yeah. After it's running. The main things to worry about are small things like we provide guests with a jug of water, five dollars. We provide them with a little gift that, depending on the guest, will leave a bottle of wine or a case of beer or whatever, you know, fifteen dollars, and we'll leave them with a bag of firewood, which is like seven dollars. And you don't just cut your own firewood. Uh, often I do. I don't have any ready at the moment, but. Mm -hmm. I have a lot ready that will be good to go for next season, but this season we'll have to probably buy maybe a, a couple hundred bucks worth of firewood. So boards, yeah. when you're talking about the grand scheme of things, the costs are going to be minimal. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure. Well, you start charging for people after that too, right? Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, your month, your, your cost per guest is what, like $20, $25? I'd call it like... I like to add in a buffer for accidental damages, for example. So I say fifty bucks okay. per per guest. So per guest, yeah. What like you're talking about? What eight hundred dollars in expenses over the course of those two months? Max. Max. Yeah. 
So, okay. So $4,400 in income, let's call it $800 in expensive being super conservative. Mm -hmm. So $3,600 in income on $22,000 invested. Is that? Uh, well, actually no, the 44 is for one month. So 84, oh. it'd be about 85 88. to 88 for two months minus the 800. So we're talking 8,000. $8,000 on 22,000. So you're yeah. talking, you're gonna get a 40, 38 ish percent return on your twenty two thousand dollars in two months. In two months, you're gonna pay this thing off before July of next year. I'm hoping to pay this thing off by yeah August first of next year is my plan. Yeah, yeah. So okay, well why don't you have five of them already? Uh, it's a good question. I definitely want to do a test. I did. I made a lot of mistakes. And I wanted to learn from those mistakes, and I did. I think the big one was trying to do too much myself. So that's one recommendation I have for everybody. You have to balance work you do yourself with the time it takes you. I decided to build my own deck. I've done it before, I'm handy. But the deck, I ran into a couple issues. It ended up taking me probably three weeks longer than I wanted to, two weeks longer. Well, that's $3,500 in revenue right there. So much revenue lost, it's like, if I hired somebody, probably would have cost me that difference and would have been less stress on me. And we would have been in the same situation just with more weeks of rentals. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest mistake I made was trying to do too many things myself. And why I only put up one is I wanted to learn from those. So now that I have that experience, the goal is to just keep growing from here. Well, I mean, if you can get a payback on your investment and, and like full 100% payback on your investment in less than a year, I mean, no brainer. Yeah, it's a no brainer. Do it all day long. So, does that mean you're out there looking at other properties to do this on? Is this uh, is this a thing now? Is this what you're going to build the empire on? I'm going to come back in a year and you're going to have 100 uh, yurts. Yeah. So, I mean, it's you're kind of a dream to be on. You'll be the Ontario yurt man. Uh, it's uh, I've been called worse. So. <laughs> That's that's kind of the plan. I, I want to keep growing this. I have such a passion for, for the cottage life. I know you do as well. Mm -hmm. I have such a pa passion for the Canadian nature. And my kind of purpose here is to provide that experience to other people. What better way to do that than providing them with an experience like, like this? That's amazing. Quick question. Just this is a technical question. Do they have access to the waterfront? Like, have you cleared a land so they have like a spot and all that type of stuff? Is that? Yeah, great question. So basically the guests have access to everything that I would have had at my cottage. So they have their own dock, which is a big like party 10 by 16 dock. That Wait, that, that, like your dock is on there too or no? Like every yeah. all the do docks are shared? Or? So it's a communal dock for now. Okay. I'm definitely, in the future going to look at having more private areas for everybody with six acres the yurt itself is very private and i made them like a private um campfire site yeah oh this is i gotta i gotta <laughs> before we go on they don't have indoor facilities there's no running water there yeah right? so it's like, very basic and keep that in mind i'm charging sometimes 200 dollars a night they don't have running water they're using an outhouse. It's a great outhouse. It's clean, it's new, etc. But it's an outhouse, yeah. no running water. Um, outdoor kitchen, very basic kind of grill camp stove. And they have basic solar. So by basic solar, they can run lamps, fans, and charge their phones basically. Yeah. And I'm still able to charge close to 200. Wow. So over the next year or two, when I start adding those amenities, you just add more. I could double the price of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about double, but uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't think you need to double. I mean, it'd yeah. be great if you could. I mean, obviously your your returns and uh, yeah. I mean that's amazing, and you're giving a great people a great experience, right? That's the that's the whole plan. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, um, if you guys want to reach out to Mike, you can you can grab him on um, Instagram. Uh, thanks, Mike, for coming Thank on. You, you know, I, this is the stuff I love. I mean, I love learning about different things, and it's just that creativeness and and how it looks and how it's structured. And you know, think outside the box. Like if you don't think you can uh, buy a a cottage, maybe this is a way you can afford it. You can you can stay in the cottage and, and put up a couple of yurts and you know get four thousand dollars a month in income. Yeah, it 
just that different mindset, right? And this is why I have people like Mike on is to show you that there's something different out there, that there's always some a different way. And I, nobody's actually told me where it comes from yet is to skin a cat, all right? So guys, if you guys like these videos, definitely subscribe, smash the like button. We'll catch you in the next one.